Hey guys, I'm Alex with Tuning School. Today I'm here to talk to you about power riders and what they are and how they can help you get more power. Okay, first of all, I want to discuss power riders or that term and what it means. Basically, what it means is you're literally adding more power to your engine. Now there's different ways to go, to go about doing so and that's what we're going to discuss with you today. The first form of power adder I want to discuss with you today is superchargers. Superchargers come in many different forms. Some of these forms include centrifugal blowers, uh, root style blowers, and twin screw blowers. The, all three are considered superchargers, but they all three have a different use, uh, what they're best used for. A centrifugal blower will provide you with more top end power, whereas a twin screw blower or a root style blower is going to give you more stoplight to stoplight performance or seat of the pants feel that some people like. So really when you're trying to decide what type of supercharger you want to run you need to decide what are you going to be doing with the car and where are you going to get the most enjoyment out of, out of the supercharger whether it be out of the gate or top end power. Another form of blower is a positive displacement blower. Now, within positive displacement blowers, you actually have two different subcategories. One category being a root style positive displacement blower, another category being a twin screw style positive displacement blower. A twin screw blower actually compacts the air as it's coming through the housing and then puts it into the engine, whereas a root style blower basically pushes air from the outside in. It's still compacting it, but not to the point where a twin screw blower is. So with a root style blower, which is popular from the factory, you're going to have more instant boost. Whereas on a twin screw blower, it's going to take slightly longer to get the boost, but it's going to maintain that boost for a longer period of time. Then you also have a centrifugal blower. A centrifugal blower takes a little bit longer to spool up, similar to how a turbo would act, but it gives you a lot of top end power and it's very popular um, with quarter mile racers, also half mile and mile racers. Another form of power adder is turbochargers. Turbochargers, as opposed to uh, a centrifugal blower, are air driven, whereas a centrifugal blower is belt driven. A turbocharger is driven by exhaust gases, right? So typically, you'll find turbochargers attached directly to the exhaust manifold, especially on factory vehicles. Now, you can have a rear mount turbo, which is actually mounted in the rear of the vehicle, and so that's a different situation. However, you have the same result. It just takes longer for the exhaust gases to hit the turbine of the turbo itself. Within a turbo, you have two main components. You have the hot side, you have the cold side. Some may call it other things, but you have a compressor housing and a turbine. The turbine is the hot side. It's attached to the exhaust. It's being driven by the exhaust, which in turn spins your impeller wheel on your cold side inside your compressor housing. So that is what actually forces air through typically an intercooler and then into your engine. Turbos are found a lot in the diesel market, but also in the gas market, and they're becoming even more popular uh, in applications such as the EcoBoost, uh, the Cruise, uh, excuse me, the Cruise vehicles as well. Um, and it's going to only continue to grow in popularity because not only can it provide power, but it can provide efficiency. You can now get the same type of power output from a 1.4 liter motor that you can with a two liter motor without a turbo. So that 1.4 liter motor with a turbo is going to be more efficient, use less fuel, and provide you with the same amount of horsepower. Now in the performance world, we use turbos to add even more power to our already powerful V8 cars, right? So it's an even better scenario, which creates great results and a lot of fun. Turbo systems can come in different forms. The primary form of turbo systems, it would be a single turbo. However, you can have twin turbo setups, and also you can have compound turbo setups, whereas one smaller turbo is feeding a larger turbo, so that way you can have quick spool, but also maintain boost at a higher level and have more efficiency at a higher RPM. Another form of power adder is nitrous oxide. Now there are a lot of common misconceptions with nitrous oxide and how it works, and whether it's safe for your motor or not. If you use nitrous oxide properly and safely, 
it can be just fine and not have any adverse effects on your motor. I've seen plenty of cars that have had hundreds of bottles sprayed through it with no problems. It just all depends on how you go about doing it and how you set it up. Now there are different forms of nitrous oxide systems. The main ones being wet kits and dry kits. A dry kit, which was used earlier on, is not as popular now as wet kits are, uh, does not have or does not supplement the amount of nitrous coming into your motor with an additional amount of fuel. It relies upon your fuel system to input the additional amount of fuel in relation to the nitrous. So typically, a dry kit is sprayed before your mass airflow sensor. So your mass airflow sensor can pick up on the additional airflow or, or the additional mass of air coming into your motor and tell your injectors to put more fuel into your motor. A dry, a dry shot or dry kit uh, requires a very good fuel system to support the additional nitrous coming in, depending on the nitrous level you are spraying, of course. This is where the wet kit has become a popular option for a lot of people with maybe a car that hasn't been completely modified, uh, but it's middle of the road, but still the customer or yourself is looking for a little bit of additional power. Well, this can come in the, in the form of a wet nitrous kit, which is typically a 100 shot, 100 horsepower shot, 75 horsepower shot. Uh, this actually takes fuel out of your fuel line and directs it through a jet. Um, just like you have a nitrous jet, you have a fuel jet. And this is where nitrous tuning comes into play because you're not only tuning your PCM now, you're also, or you're not only tuning your car with your PCM, but you're also tuning your nitrous kit with your jets. So it's important that your air, fu air fuel ratio is correct after you're spraying the nitrous and fuel as opposed to what it was before without nitrous and fuel. With nitrous oxide, you have different ways of actually inputting it into your motor. You can have a uh, plate system. You can also have a direct port system where you're actually injecting nitrous and fuel into each port on your intake manifold as opposed to a plate system where it's just shooting fuel and nitrous into one location and then atomizing in, in your intake system and then going into your motor. A direct port has some advantages to a, a plate system because you can inject the nitrous and fuel mixture into your motor. Nitrous oxide is very popular, uh, especially in today's world, because it's a less expensive option or a less expensive power adder as opposed to adding a supercharger or a turbo. Um, now, it does have some downfalls because you have to refill your bottle uh, pretty often, especially if you're using it on a pretty regular basis. Other than that, once you've purchase the initial equipment, it's not that bad. Okay guys, now that we've discussed some different forms of power adders, if you would like additional information, please feel free to check out some of our other videos online, on YouTube, or on Facebook, and also feel free to call us at the number below.